But if all Jesus did was die for sins and there is no resurrection, well then all of Christianity is useless. Luke 24 opens up on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, where we find these women headed to the tomb. Once they get there, they discover that the stone has been rolled away. They were told that they go ahead and go in, but they did not find the body of Jesus Christ. Verse 3 there is a very short verse telling us that they didn't find his body, but it's a very important verse for Christianity. The Christian's explanation for why that body wasn't there is that God raised Jesus from the dead. All of Christianity hangs on that very fact. I'm sure you've heard that Jesus loves you, that God loves you, that Jesus died for your sins. There's many verses in the Bible that testify to this. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Another passage in 1 John, the second chapter, we're told that Jesus is the propitiation or the means of appeasement for the sins of all the world over and over throughout the scriptures, and especially in the Gospels and the book of Acts, where we read of the apostles preaching, we're told of this sacrifice of Jesus Christ. We're told how he was the payment for sins, how he died on that cross. But if all Jesus did was die for sins and there is no resurrection, well, then all of Christianity is useless. What good would it do to have faith in a Savior that's not resurrected? You know, the Holy Spirit makes that very argument in the book of 1 Corinthians. Apparently there were some there that didn't believe in a resurrection, that they or others would be resurrected. And in addressing their misunderstanding, the Holy Spirit, by the hand of Paul, asked this question in the 12th verse of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. If Christ is being preached as resurrected, how is it that some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? Notice he ties the hope of resurrection that a believer would have very directly to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He goes on in verse 13, and he's going to show you and I just how important, how pivotal, how crucial the resurrection is to Christianity. In verse 13, we read the following. But if there's no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty and your faith also is empty. And yes, we are found false witnesses of God because we have testified that he raised up Christ whom he did not raise up, if in fact the dead do not rise. For if the dead do not rise, then Christ is not risen. If Christ is not risen, then your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. Then also those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. So it's clear here that the Holy Spirit is making a case that the resurrection is at the very core of Christianity. He's telling us that if Christ wasn't raised from the dead, then there's a couple of things that would be true. Number one, he says that preaching in the name of a resurrected Christ would be empty or vain, a useless activity. Why preach a resurrected Savior if he wasn't resurrected? In fact, he says, to preach that God raised Jesus from the dead when the dead don't raise would cause them to be false teachers. And certainly that would be a waste of time to be a false teacher. A second implication is not only would the preaching be empty, but faith in Jesus Christ itself would be empty or, as he says here, futile, a waste of your time. Why believe in a resurrected Christ if he's not resurrected? Faith in Christ would do you no good, and in that state, you would still be in your sins, and those that have fallen asleep in Christ or have passed away while believing in Jesus would have just perished. So without a resurrection, not only is preaching of a resurrected Savior a empty activity, so too would belief in a resurrected Savior be an empty activity. However, if Christ was raised from the dead, then the opposite of those things are true. Namely, that preaching a resurrected Savior has purpose and has power. Why? Because that's how the world can hear of Jesus Christ and believe in him. In 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 23, the Holy Spirit says, we preach Christ crucified to the Jews, a stumbling block. Let me try that verse again. We preach Christ crucified to the Jews, a stumbling block, and to the Greeks, foolishness. But to them, the called out ones, both Jews and Greeks, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. 
So a resurrected Christ gives purpose and power to the preaching of Jesus Christ. Additionally, a resurrected Christ gives meaning and purpose to belief in Christ. That belief in a resurrected Savior is how a person can access the forgiveness of sins that Christ paid for through his death, burial, and resurrection. 1 Peter 1 and verse 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Notice it's through the resurrection of Christ that one is born again at the mercy of God. So a resurrected Christ gives purpose and power not only to the preaching, but also to faith in Christ. We see then just how important the resurrection of Jesus Christ is. Well, what does it really mean that Jesus is risen from the dead? What implications? We see that it gives power to the preaching. We see that it gives meaning and purpose to belief in Christ, but why? Well, let me add a couple more verses to our discussion here that there are the claims that are made by the Bible. In Romans chapter 1 and verse 3, speaking of Jesus, it says, Now concerning his son, Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. Notice that phrase, declared to be the Son of God by the resurrection from the dead. That word declared means to mark out or set the boundaries up. In other words, by his resurrection, Jesus defines what it means to be the Son of God. That resurrection proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that Jesus is the Son of God. A little bit later in the same book, Romans, the 14th chapter, we're told for this cause he both died and was resurrected, that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. So by that resurrection that he was raised from the dead, not only did he define what it means to be the Son of God, he also became the Lord of the living and the dead of all. He is the Lord of lords and King of kings. As such, as the Lord of all, that grants him the right to rule. As the Son of God, the creator of all that is, that grants him the right to rule. This right to rule extends throughout all of his creation that was granted to him when he was resurrected from the dead because he became the Lord of all. That right to rule includes teaching you and I what's right and wrong, what's moral and immoral, how we should live in this life. Consider Matthew 22 where Jesus is asked what the greatest commandment in the law is. In verse 37, he responds by saying, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul and with all your mind. And he goes on to add to that to say the second is like that one, that you shall love your neighbor as yourself. In making this statement of these greatest commandments, Jesus is telling us that mor mortality, or not mortality, morality, how we live matters to God. And Jesus, as the only Lord, has the right to rule your life in this area. Likewise, when Jesus tells us in Matthew, the 15th chapter in verse nine, that people can worship him in vain, he's telling us that how we worship matters to him, that not all worship is going to be accepted, but some of it will be vain, useless, or empty. As the Lord, he has the right to rule and to tell us how, worship, how to worship him. In other words, worshiping God isn't about what we like or we feel comfortable with, rather it's about obedience to the only Lord Jesus Christ. His right to rule extends into telling us how to be saved. There are a lot of opinions about salvation and what a person should or shouldn't do, but all of those come from individuals who've not been raised from the dead to never die again. They come from individuals who are not the Lord, but Jesus Christ by the resurrection is the Lord of Lords and King of Kings with the right to rule. And he says very simply, he who believes and is baptized will be saved. He has the right to rule in these areas. So these things, how to live, how to worship, how to be saved, all matter because Jesus Christ, the Lord, has spoken on these things. By his resurrection, he defined what it means to be the Son of God. By his resurrection, he defined what it means to be the Lord. And that right of resurrection gives him the right to rule. And one day he's coming back and he's going to hold all men accountable for how they live this life. You want proof of that? Acts chapter 17 and verse 31 says, 
because he is appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he ordained. Now that word ordained that's there is the same word that we saw back in Romans chapter one, where we saw it, it defines, Jesus by it defines what it means to be the son of God by the resurrection. God ordained him or defined him as the son of God by that resurrection. He goes on there in Acts chapter 17 and says he's going to judge the world and tells us that this is going to happen. And he says he's given full assurance to all men in that he raised him from the dead. You want proof that Jesus is coming back? The tomb is empty. That's the proof that God has given you, that you can believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, the Lord of Lords, and that you could turn to him in faith and find salvation. Now, in our video today, we've not really dove into the various theories, the various explanations for why the tomb was empty. We've just talked about what the scriptures say about the resurrection, that by it, Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that by it, he is the Lord. And because there's a resurrection, those that have faith in him, there's a meaning and purpose to that faith, that being one day that we'll be resurrected with him. So what about you? Have you really, with an honest heart, and an open mind looked into that empty tomb and examined the evidence? Have you looked at those theories that try to explain away the empty tomb with a critical and honest heart? Have you looked at the evidence that God has given you that says Jesus is the Christ and he's coming back again? Thanks for stopping by the Mended Collective today. If you've enjoyed the video, I invite you to hit the like button. I invite you to share this video with other individuals that you think might find it enjoyable. If you want to know when future videos are dropped, please subscribe. And as always, we'd love for you to drop a, a comment or a question down below. Until next time, God bless from the Mended Collective.